ever pondered the question, how did life begin on Earth? It's a query as old as humanity itself, a riddle wrapped in the fabric of existence, a mystery that has intrigued thinkers, philosophers, and scientists for centuries. The origin of life on Earth is not just a scientific question, but a fundamental exploration of who we are and where we come from. There are various theories attempting to unravel this enigma, each as fascinating as the other, each providing a different window into the past. From abiogenesis to panspermia, from the depths of hydrothermal vents to the far reaches of comets and asteroids, we find ourselves in a cosmic detective story. These theories explore the possibility of life's beginnings, the spark that ignited the flame of existence. The question remains, how did we transition from the simplicity of raw elements to the complexity of life as we know it? Join us as we delve into the 10 most compelling theories about the inception of life on our planet. The oldest theory in our list is spontaneous generation. This theory, which dates back to ancient times, posits that life could spontaneously form from non-living matter. It's a concept that might seem a bit odd to us today, but think about it. If you've ever seen maggots wriggling in a piece of rotting meat, you might have wondered where they came from. That's precisely what spontaneous generation suggests, that these life forms just appeared out of nowhere, born from the lifeless carcass. This idea was widely accepted for centuries. From the ancient Greeks to medieval thinkers, many believed that life could just spontaneously arise from non-living substances. For instance, it was thought that rotting grain could spontaneously generate mice, or that flies could materialize from decaying meat. However, by the 19th century, this theory started to lose its luster. Scientists began to question and test the concept of spontaneous generation, leading to a series of experiments that eventually debunked it. They found that those wriggling maggots in the meat, they didn't just appear out of the blue. Instead, they were the offspring of flies that had laid their eggs in the meat. While the theory of spontaneous generation has been largely debunked, it's not without its importance. It challenged thinkers of the time to question and explore the origins of life, paving the way for future theories that continue to shape our understanding of life's beginnings. While this concept has been largely debunked, it paved the way for future theories. Building upon spontaneous generation, we arrive at abiogenesis. Abiogenesis is a theory that attempts to explain the origin of life on Earth, suggesting that life sprang from simple organic compounds. This idea takes us back around 4 billion years when Earth was a young, volatile planet. Now let's talk about an experiment that brought this theory to life, quite literally. In the mid-20th century, two scientists named Stanley Miller and Harold Urey embarked on an experiment that simulated the conditions believed to be present on the early Earth. They filled a flask with water, methane, ammonia, and hydrogen, creating a miniature version of what they thought our prebiotic world was like. They then sparked this mixture with electricity to mimic lightning, a common occurrence in the early days of our planet. The result? They found that simple organic compounds could indeed form under these conditions, and some of these compounds are the building blocks of life as we know it. Amino acids, the components of proteins, were among the compounds formed. However, it's important to note that while the Miller-Urey experiment showed that life's building blocks could be formed from simpler compounds, it did not demonstrate how these building blocks could organize themselves into living organisms. There's still a lot we don't know about this process. While not proven, abiogenesis remains a compelling theory. It provides a starting point for understanding how life might have arisen from the chemistry of the early Earth, a mystery that continues to captivate scientists around the globe. Next, let's step off our planet and gaze into the stars with panspermia. This intriguing theory suggests that life on Earth might not have originated here at all, but rather hitched a ride on a comet or meteorite from some distant corner of the cosmos. Panspermia, from the Greek words pan, meaning all, and sperma, meaning seed, proposes that life in the form of microscopic organisms or spores can survive the harsh conditions of outer space and travel across galaxies carried by dust, meteorites, asteroids, or comets. Imagine, if you will, a comet cruising through the cosmos, its icy body sheltering resilient microbes. 
A collision sends shards of this comet hurtling towards Earth, bringing these cosmic stowaways with it. Then, upon arrival, these life forms could have found the conditions on Earth suitable and started the process of evolution as we know it. It's like nature's own intergalactic delivery service, depositing the building blocks of life on different planets. This theory could explain why life appeared on Earth relatively quickly after the planet formed and cooled down. It's a tantalizing thought, isn't it? The possibility that we're not just inhabitants of Earth, but descendants of alien life forms. That the seeds of life are not unique to our planet, but scattered throughout the universe, waiting for the right conditions to flourish. Could we all be aliens? The jury is still out. Oh, from the stars, we now dive deep into our oceans with the hydrothermal vent theory. This intriguing theory suggests that life, in its most primitive form, could have originated from the seafloor's hydrothermal vents. These are essentially underwater geysers that spew out mineral-rich water heated by the Earth's magma. Now, you might be wondering, how could life possibly start in such a seemingly hostile environment? Well, the hydrothermal vents create a unique ecosystem teeming with nutrients and energy. The vents spew out a cocktail of chemicals, including hydrogen, methane, and various minerals. These elements, when mixed with the surrounding seawater, create a rich soup of organic compounds. This nutrient-dense environment could have been a fertile breeding ground for life's earliest forms. It's like a primordial kitchen, where the right ingredients combined under the right conditions could have stirred up the first signs of life. The theory is bolstered by the existence of extremophiles, organisms that thrive in extreme conditions. Many of these organisms are found near hydrothermal vents, surviving and even flourishing in the intense heat and pressure. However, like any good mystery, the hydrothermal vent theory isn't without its challenges. Finding conclusive evidence has proved elusive, and the extreme conditions at these depths make research difficult. But the search is far from over. Scientists continue to explore the depths of our oceans, hoping to unravel the secrets of our origins. The deep ocean could be the birthplace of life, but the search for evidence continues. From the depths of the ocean, we move to the surface of the Earth with the clay theory. This theory presents an intriguing concept that life might have stemmed from the seemingly lifeless terrain of clay minerals. Let's delve into the details. The clay theory, or as some might call it, the clay hypothesis, suggests that complex organic molecules could have formed on the surface of clay minerals in the early Earth's crust. The idea here is that clay, composed of silicate minerals, could have acted as a catalyst aiding in the formation of complex structures from simpler organic compounds. Now you might wonder, why clay? Well, clay minerals have an innate ability to absorb various chemicals in their structure. Think of them as a natural laboratory where organic compounds could have collided, interacted and bonded together to form more complex molecules, maybe even the precursors to life as we know it. Moreover, clay particles have a unique property they carry a negative charge. This quality could have attracted positively charged ions in the primitive oceans, leading to a rich concentration of organic compounds on clay surfaces. It's a fascinating concept, isn't it? That life as we know it, teeming with complexity and diversity, might have had its humble beginnings in a mound of clay. It's a theory that reminds us of the incredible potential that lies in the simplest of substances around us. Could life have started from a lump of clay? We don't know yet. But the clay theory certainly poses an interesting possibility for us to ponder upon. Now, let's return to space with the comet theory. Imagine a comet, a celestial snowball of ice and dust hurtling through the inky void of space. The comet theory proposes that these icy travelers could have played a vital role in the origin of life on Earth. In the vast expanse of our universe, comets are like cosmic delivery trucks, packed with a treasure trove of organic compounds. As they journey across the cosmos, they carry these compounds within their icy cores. If a comet were to collide with a planet, it could, theoretically, deliver these life-giving ingredients directly to the planet's surface. When considering Earth, it's plausible that billions of years ago, a comet loaded with organic compounds crashed into our planet. 
the impact could have kick-started a chain of reactions, leading to the formation of the first living organisms. Research into this theory has found organic compounds on comets, further fueling the possibility that these celestial bodies could have delivered the necessary chemicals for life to begin. Scientists have even discovered amino acids, the building blocks of proteins and life on comets, adding more weight to this theory. However, while the comet theory is compelling, it's not without its challenges. The harsh conditions of space and the violent impact of a comet's collision could have destroyed these delicate compounds rather than nurturing life. Comets could have been the delivery service for life, but the evidence remains elusive. Moving on, we delve into the realm of genetics with the RNA world theory. This fascinating concept proposes that life on Earth began with self-replicating RNA molecules. RNA, or ribonucleic acid, is like a sibling to DNA, the famous molecule that holds our genetic code. However, RNA has a critical ability that DNA lacks. It can act as a catalyst, speeding up chemical reactions. This unique dual functionality, carrying genetic information and catalyzing reactions, is central to the RNA world theory. Picture a world billions of years ago where simple organic compounds in the primordial soup start forming RNA. This RNA, in turn, begins to replicate itself. Over time, through a process of natural selection, more complex RNA structures emerge, eventually giving rise to proteins and DNA, the building blocks of life as we know it. This theory is supported by the fact that RNA still plays a crucial role in our cells today. It acts as a messenger, carrying instructions from DNA to control the synthesis of proteins essential for all life functions. Still, the RNA world theory is not without its challenges. For one, the creation of RNA in a prebiotic world is a complex process that we don't fully understand yet. Also, RNA is quite unstable and prone to breaking down, which raises questions about its plausibility as the first self-replicating molecule. Could RNA be the original blueprint for life? The search for answers continues. From RNA, we shift to lipids with the lipid world theory. Now, when we say lipids, we're talking about fats, oils, waxes, essentially the stuff that makes up cell membranes. This theory proposes a unique perspective, suggesting that life actually began within these lipid bilayers, the structural basis of cell membranes. Imagine a world where the waters of ancient Earth were teeming with these lipid bilayers. In this scenario, these lipid structures might spontaneously form bubbles or vesicles in water due to their hydrophobic or water-fearing properties. These vesicles could potentially provide a protected environment for the development and evolution of complex organic molecules. Now, let's consider for a moment the nature of these lipid bubbles. They're dynamic, flexible, and can grow by incorporating more lipids. They can divide and merge, allowing for the exchange of molecular contents. This mimics some basic behaviors we associate with living cells. But here's where things get really interesting. These lipid vesicles might also have been able to encapsulate RNA or other nucleic acids, providing a platform for the development of more complex life forms. So it's a fascinating idea, isn't it? The lipid world theory paints a picture of life's origin as a grand molecular dance, happening within billions of tiny lipid bubbles floating in the primordial soup of early Earth. Could life have started in a bubble? The mystery remains. Finally, we come to the co-evolution theory. This captivating hypothesis suggests a cooperative effort in the genesis of life. Unlike other theories that propose a step-by-step -step progression, the co-evolution theory posits that life began with the simultaneous evolution of two key players, proteins and nucleic acids. Imagine it like a dance, where both partners are essential and each step is coordinated and intertwined. Proteins are the workhorses of the cell, responsible for most of the physical structures and biochemical functions. On the other hand, nucleic acids, such as DNA and RNA, hold the blueprints, the essential instructions for making and utilizing proteins. But here's the catch. Proteins are required to read these instructions and build new proteins. So, which came first? It's like the classic chicken or the egg conundrum. The coevolution theory bypasses this problem by suggesting that proteins and nucleic acids evolved together, each influencing and benefiting from the other's development. 
This theory suggests a beautifully harmonious relationship at the heart of life's origin, where proteins and nucleic acids, in a sense, bootstrapped each other into existence. While this concept may seem complex, it's a reminder of the intricate and interconnected nature of life. As we delve deeper into the mysteries of our origins, the coevolution theory offers one potential answer to the question, how did life on Earth begin? Yet it also invites more questions, encouraging us to keep exploring, to keep questioning. Could life have been a cooperative effort? We still have much to learn. So, how did life begin on Earth? We've delved into 10 intriguing theories that strive to answer this question. From the idea of spontaneous generation, the belief in life arising from non-living matter, to abiogenesis, the process by which life forms from simple organic compounds. We've explored panspermia, the theory that life on Earth originated from microscopic life forms on comets or asteroids. We considered the hydrothermal vent theory and the clay theory, suggesting life might have started in the ocean depths or on mineral-rich clay. We've pondered the comet theory, proposing that comets delivered the building blocks of life to our planet. We've examined the RNA world and lipid world theories, focusing on the vital roles RNA and lipids might have played. And we've also delved into the coevolution theory, which posits that all elements of life evolved simultaneously. The origin of life remains one of the greatest mysteries of science, and it is this quest for knowledge that keeps pushing us forward. As we approach the end of this video, we're keen to hear your thoughts. Did any theory particularly pique your interest? Or perhaps there is another theory you believe deserves our attention? We are always prepared to dive further into these captivating subjects, and your perspectives are crucial to our exploration. The beauty of science is that it thrives on curiosity and dialogue. So we encourage you to share your If this journey through the intriguing theories of life's origins added something new to your knowledge, we would appreciate if you could press the like button. Do subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for future journeys into the cosmic enigmas. And why keep the knowledge to yourself? Share this video with your friends, family, and fellow science aficionados. The greater the number of participants in this discussion, the broader our collective understanding becomes. We are grateful for your contribution to our pursuit of truth. Stay inquisitive and continue to discover. Until next time.